All right, so apparently to turn this machine on, you have to hold the power button for 50, 50 seconds. That. Make, uh, freeze the, no. To install Mac OS X, click continue and then follow the on-screen instructions. What if I don't want to do that? Hello everyone and welcome to the Tech House. Now you might notice a little something new here. Say hello friends. This is an iMac G5. You can tell because there's no webcam. You know, the eyesight model. Which was a nightmare to repair apparently. This is the original model. Which is great because this thing apparently does not have a working screen. Not only that, I tried turning it on and I just got a, uh, I got, just got a blinking light on the front. So, we're gonna open this thing up and see, try to figure out what's wrong with this. Let's go. screws under here that you have to undo in order to open the computer. So, you got one, and these screws don't actually uh, come out of the computer even, a even after you've uh, undid all of them. One's over there, one is over here. Oh, and by the way, the fans were screaming at me when I uh, turned this thing on as well. Not you guys, the actual fans inside the computer. Yeah, the third one's down here under the stand, and as I'm Recording this, the computer clan just uploaded. Oh, and there we go. The screws are now undone, and the ultra-thin iMac part is gone. It looks like we're missing RAM. <laughs> so that would explain why this thing is uh, beeping at me. Or not beeping at me. So, I don't even know if that's connected all the way. Let me take a look. Uh, looking at the screen cables. Oh, I didn't even see this piece before. I had another unit that didn't actually come with any of these internals, and, uh, yeah. I was very annoyed by that, but this little cover didn't even come with it either. So, we got the sadist stuff over here. Screen cables are down. Or that one is. I'm going to remove this cover over here. That is if I can, with this dumb screwdriver. Maybe I should have cracked out the screw gun from the HP reinstallation video. I think this model is also one that you could use a vase amount on. Oh, I don't think I've actually seen one with that. Most of them have the iconic stand, and I ripped off a tab by accident. This is actually in really good condition, not gonna lie. There was a lot more covers than I thought there were, but uh... I see a cable that's down in its slot. I don't know if this cover just comes off. It doesn't look like there's a screw there. This metal one here should have come off, but it's being really stubborn right now. And there's also an Apple mm, mouse in my pocket. The, the name that we can't say anymore because it's trademarked. So, I think this cover is the one that's used that's for the disk drive. Can I just lift up on it? Oh, there we go. Now it's off. Ah oh, yes, slot load. Because tray loaders suck, apparently. So, I just realized this might not even be a screen issue at all. We might just have to throw some RAM in this thing. Because, you know, without RAM, a computer can't actually just start up. Oh, would you look at that? It's Apple branded. That's how you know it's legit. Well, I'm pretty sure you can replace these things with a, with a standard, normal slot loading disk drive. Or a tray loader if you wanted to modify the case for that. <laughs> but these things were not built to have anything other than a slot load. Lost the screw that's supposed to go here, but uh, let me just put this down. I don't think I lost the screw, actually. Oh, never mind. I, yeah, I definitely did. 
So we'll just let that sit loose in the case, I guess, if I ever do end up finding it. <laughs> With the other uh, unit I did order, I did uh, get did get this thing. This might be a Bluetooth card. I'm not sure, but I'll have to look into that. One thing I do have somewhere is an Airport Extreme card that came out of a broken iBook G4. If I find it, I'll throw it in later. But for now, let's get some RAM and let's install this hard drive. Okay, so the RAM I tried it did not uh, did not actually fit in the system. So I uh, pulled some RAM out of a system I wasn't using, and miraculously, it happened to be the exact RAM I needed. I also threw an Airport Extreme card in here and a hard drive. So the good news is, this is actually a full system now. The bad news is, it doesn't have an operating system. Which leads us into an installation sensation, as Crazy Ken would call it. But first, let's put this back panel back on. Which is why this thing is so simple to actually repair when things go wrong. Take notes, Apple because you shouldn't have to take off the screen of a computer in order to get, in order to repair the hard drive when things inevitably go bad. Believe it or not, Steve Jobs got things right. <laughs> Most people believe that though, and that's a good thing. Because this is a very good computer, and it's a Steve Jobs computer. Although I think, uh, I think there was, yeah, there's something wrong with him the day of the keynote, so somebody else actually introduced this thing. There's actually three models of this one. Um, this is the first one, obviously. This is the first one, because there's no camera. The second one added an ambient light sensor, which I actually have the power supply to. It was a small change, but it was a change. And the third gen was the one that led to the Intel iMac, the one with the iSight, which is why those two computers are almost indistinguishable. But enough small talk, let's get this thing booted up. Attempt one begins in three, two, one. Plug into the wall, nothing blew up, turn the power button, hit, hit the power button. It's on this side. Hello, I think something's supposed to happen. What the heck is wrong with it now? Oh, power cord must have been too loose. All right, without taking another cut, attempt number three. Turn on, turn on, please. Why is this thing not working? All right, so apparently to turn this machine on, you have to hold the power button for 50, 50 seconds, and then boom, it, it works now, except it doesn't because there's no operating system. Now, the hard drive I did throw in there actually did have a, have a whole operating system on it, but it's Windows. As some of you may know, boot camp wasn't a thing until 2006 with the Intel iMacs, or Intel Macs in general. This is a PowerPC computer. It supports Linux. It does not support Windows. So, we're going to have to do an all races restore with uh, Leopard, is what I'm going to throw on here. But first, I'm going to need a Leopard installer and a mouse and keyboard. Let's go get that. All right, so right here we have a 2006 MacBook. Well, th this thing actually has a... Uh, OS 10 Leopard installed DVD like image to the uh, image on his hard drive. So what I want to do, I want to take this uh, portable hard drive from Toshiba here. <laughs> I want to I want to make a partition that's like 10 gigabytes in size. This is a one terabyte drive, by the way. And I'm gonna use that to install OS 10 Leopard on the iMac. So first, we're gonna have to boot up our MacBook here. Aw, oh, that classic chime right there. For some reason, I installed Refine on this thing, so I gotta hit Enter before it actually starts in Mac OS X. Remember when it was called Mac OS X, not Mac OS, like they changed it in high, uh, Mac OS Sierra? 
which was three years ago, I believe. This computer is actually running Snow Leopard. Enter the password, and let's go. Oh, hey, look, it's one of those wallpapers you can download on my website. So now we should be uh, good to go to plug this thing in to our computer. All right, so it, uh, it, it registered everything. Oh, and yes, I have quite a few things on here. Uh, I think I got old uh, Microsoft Office 2011. I got an old version of Final Cut Studio on here or whatever. I'm going to have to try that in a video. But what we're really looking for, utilities. So this, uh, this is Snow Leopard, and this was back in the days when uh, disk utility was actually pretty good. So uh, we should be able to select one terabyte Toshiba external drive, hit the partition button, and I'm gonna take a cut. What? Nah. Uh, can I undo all that? Oh, yeah, revert. So I'm gonna add a partition to this. I'm not splitting this in half. Uh, 101 gigs, really? I don't need that much. How about 10 gigs? I'm restoring an eight gigabyte image, so. Ah, eh, yeah, let's just name it Video Drive 2. <laughs> If you didn't know, this is the hard drive I was actually playing, I was, uh, would like to use to, I, I used to cut video and stuff with, as of now. I found it earlier, uh, not that long ago, but I, I've started cutting, cutting video on this. In fact, I believe the entire Star Talks episode, I, the last video I did, which you should check out after this, I believe that entire video was edited with that with this hard drive, so that's pretty cool. That's why I named it Video Drive. So yeah, it's formatting with uh, Mac OS exter uh, extended. Video Drive Two. Now we're gonna do a res restore. Source uh, Leopard Ten Five Four. Drop that in here. Oh, I think I actually have it on this list here. Yeah, I do. Uh, erase destination, and we take video drive two and put it here. Yeah, I'm gonna erase the destination, even though I just formatted it. Erase, and let's go. Enter our password. Hit enter. What? How is the username and password incorrect? All right. Are you serious? All right, so I gotta scan this crap. Let's uh, forget about that. I'm actually gonna open it now. So open, open Leopard 1054, skip verifying because nobody wants to do that. I am really sick of actually opening these things up in modern Mac OS because you have to wait for it to verify. Otherwise it will not actually open up. I should be able to use this as a source, right? <laughs> use the image. Mac OS X install DVD. I want to... Oh my god. Eject then. So let's just do this stupid scanning crap. Yeah, scan image for restore. Hit the OK button, and it's going to scan the image now. Scanning of Leopard 1054 is completed successfully. Now I think we can restore it. I'm not even going to erase the destination. Restore, restore, enter password that you cannot see. So. All right, estimated time calculating is copying files now. I think that's what we wanted it to do. I should really stop talking when I try to adjust the camera. 29 minutes? I can't wait that long. <laughs> this is probably going to take a while. See you when this is done. Okay, so this process is actually about done. I don't think it's been uh, 29 minutes, but more like 15, actually. I think you uh, calculated a little bit uh, too long. <laughs> hey, at least it's not... Uh, six and a half days to download one file like it was three years ago with OS X El Capitan. I'm making a lot of Crazy Ken references. But hey, this entire episode is actually kind of a Crazy Ken reference because I got an iMac G5. It wouldn't start. 
Well, I think I did get a little bit cheaper than Crazy Ken did. But, uh, yeah, we have to fix it now. <laughs> Boom, episode. Actually, I think the reason this, uh, the light, the white, yeah. The light turned white on my hard drive is because uh, I plugged it into a USB 2 port and not a USB 3 port. Because <laughs> usually it's blue whenever I plug it into moder a modern computer. But this is an old MacBook, not a new one. Less than one minute remaining. I sure hope so. Oh, hey, I love that old OS 10 screensaver that probably doesn't work anymore on modern Macs, even though. You know, we haven't needed them since, what, 2005, maybe? Even then, we had LCD screens back then. Yeah, I think it's been a little bit more than a minute, mate. <laughs> now you're under-calculating the estimated time remaining. Also, I just realized the disk image size is actually 6.9 gigabytes. Yeah, you still need a 8 gigabyte disk to hold all that, but... <laughs> hey, you know, a bit more space is better than... Not enough space, am I right? And it's done! So, yeah, all of this is cleared. I think it's been cleared, actually, never mind. So, we're gonna try to unmount this. Yeah, eject. And all of that is now gone. So, I'm gonna wait for the disk drive to stop blinking, and we can continue. It's now all gone. Which means we're done. And now, let's try with the iMac G5. Alright, so, uh... I made a very fatal mistake. I was messing around with the open firmware, and I, uh, uh, during that, I ended up coming to the realization that this hard drive was set to the GUID partition system. It will not boot on a PowerPC Mac with the GUID partition system. With the Apple partition system, it will do that. So. Actually, I, I formatted it for Apple Partition System. Let's see if it works now. All right, so I have high I have high doubts that what I'm gonna try next is gonna work, but hey, let's do it anyways. Hooked up to the computer is an Apple Pro keyboard and an Apple trademark dispute mouse. All right, let's get started. I hear the sound. And this thing will not start up chime for some reason. I think the volume is muted. Unless somebody disabled the chime. I don't know. Whoa, is it like a jet engine started up in here? Jeez, it's very loud when you go into the uh, interface on this computer. <laughs> I don't know why. I don't know why it does this. I could probably make a lot of jokes out of this, but I'm not going to because I can't think of any. Right, so nothing showed up. I'm going to try uh, refreshing it one more time, and then we're going to go the open firmware route. Which is probably what we're going to have to do, because the only only PowerPC computer I've ever gotten to boot off a of USB is my old iMac G3, and that's from 1999. I don't know why they changed it to not be able to do that, but whatever. Because, you know, in 2006, they changed it back, so you could do that. Whatever. Yeah, uh, still got the watch cursor. And, yep, yep, it's gone. Right. So, we're gonna have to go the open firmware route. Because this computer does not support just simply booting off the USB. Alright, so, it, it turns out that the Tiger files are, uh, weren't actually anywhere else. For, uh, like, a anywhere. In my mess of computers so i'm re-downloading them and it seems like everything's gonna take an hour i don't have an hour to spend and i would like to be done for today <laughs> so i'm gonna come back tomorrow hopefully these are gonna be done i'm gonna burn them all off camera and then we're gonna try them in the imac so see you tomorrow Alright, so it's the next day now, um, I didn't burn all those discs because now I have a new idea. I did burn one disc though. And we're gonna, so we're gonna put this one into the machine, make sure it stops squeaking, using slot load. So basically all you have to do is you put it in there and you slam it into its side. 
And if my calculations are correct that I never did, this thing should now be starting OS 10.4, or at least its installer. And there we go. Apple screen. Hey, it matches the logo down here. That seriously take a minute for it to start reading. Whoa. Never seen a white screen. Oh, okay. There we go. Never seen to do the white white screen before. Usually it goes through the blue. Alright, so use English as the main language. Preparing installation. Here's my idea. Utilities. Disk utility. And I don't feel like I'm adjusting the camera anymore, so I'm just gonna move it into the frame. But never mind, it's already kind of in the, it's already pretty much in the frame. Oh, this thing's a little bit lagging. Gathering disk information. Okay, so you can see the oh 232 gigabytes. That's, that's weird. It's a bit less than I was hoping for, but whatever. So we're gonna. Oh, here's the thing. I want to change the partition system. Current. Uh, I'm gonna want two partitions. One is gonna be really small, and this one's gonna be that. Make uh. No, I, I'm, I'm gonna change the. What? No, I, I, I want this to be the. Okay, so I'm gonna change this to macOS Extended Journal, and I'm gonna erase the drive. Yeah, we'll just go with that for now. Erase. And everything that's on there will be gone. Oh, is it done already? Yeah, that was quick. So... Alright, that is done now. So, we're just gonna go ahead and close out of that. And we're gonna quit out of the installer. And we are going to restart the computer now and see if I can get the installer. Oh, by the way, that light actually has an orange tint to it. Here come the jet fans again, and we have macOS 10 install DVD uh, on a with a hard drive icon. Okay, that's a, that's a CD. Now, whenever this thing stops loading, we're gonna go ahead and boot off the hard drive one because that showed up first. Click. There we go. Can I hit the eject button and just have it work? If I hold the... Okay, I don't think that's gonna work. Aw, oh, look at that beautiful Aurora background. Once again, we're gonna use English as the main language. Click. Welcome to Mac OS X Leopard Installer. To install Mac OS X, click continue and then follow the on-screen instructions. What if I don't want to do that? To continue installing the software, you must agree to the terms of software license agreement. Well, I'm going to go ahead and read you a story. English, Apple Incorporated, software license agreement for Mac OS X. Single use and family pack license for the use on Apple labeled items. Apple labeled systems. Please read the software license agreement license carefully before using the Apple software. Six and a half hours later. The color profile software distributed with the Apple software is also available for download from Adobe at www.adobe.com. EA0390 rev.8-14-07. All right, we read that whole thing. Totally agree. So, I'm actually 5. That's where we want to throw it anyways. None of these work because, you know, Mac OS X can't start from that volume. You know, because it's a PowerPC system. Continue. Why don't PowerPC systems actually let you uh, boot from USB? Alright, so you might, um, if I was doing this like a normal human being, I would use, just click install. We're not normal human beings, apparently. All right, uh, we're not gonna use printer drivers because I don't want to put I don't want to hook this into a printer. 
I don't need to anyways. Additional fonts, why the heck not? Language translations, I only live... This is going to be used in the United States only. X11. Why not? And of course, essential system software. That's pretty good. So, install. And now it's installing Mac OS X. Time remaining, calculating. When are you going to be done calculating that, though? That's the question. Oh, okay. Seeing as I'm installing from the hard drive to the hard drive, this shouldn't actually take ter that long, since SATA speeds are actually pretty good. Oh yeah, see, it's, it's, the progress bar is kind of jumping. Meanwhile, I'm gonna, okay, open installer log, that's what we want. So yeah, I don't wanna show errors only, I wanna show all logs. That's how we do it. It's still calculating the time remaining. How is it still doing that? You, you would think we'd have an estimate by now. Whatever, I'll just get back to you when we're done. We are now at about a minute remaining on the install timer thing, I guess. So, <laughs> how, how long do you think it's actually gonna take? Cause you know, I have a feeling this isn't gonna take, this is gonna take a bit more than a minute, perhaps. It's actually taken quite a while so far. Then again, I found ways to keep myself entertained. Or uh, I think it's been taking about like 15 minutes or so. Uh, yeah, still says about a minute. I feel like it's been about a minute, but it's very close to the end. I'm gonna open the log back up. Show all logs. Finalizing disk for for OS install. I don't know how long it takes for uh, for you to finalize the disk, mate. I also don't know what the USB hard drive is doing. It just blinked for a little bit. Fans are still going pretty good. It hasn't uh, started screaming at me. But I will say, you don't have to buy a space heater if you own an iMac G5 or if you own a. a if you own any G5 system. Because these things do get pretty hot, not gonna lie. Yeah, I can feel the warmth back there. These G5s, they're very powerful, but they are not very efficient. And they never were. And that's why, you know, they ended up going to Intel systems. Oh, okay, that was done. Install succeeded. I Mac OS X was installed in your iMac G5 volume. The computer must restart to complete the installation. Well, time to restart. And now we got a gray screen. All right, we got the spinning wheel. That doesn't indicate anything. <laughs> and you about done. Wait, okay. I'm gonna unplug the USB hard drive real quick so it doesn't take as long to start up, perhaps. I dropped that on the floor. Hopefully that didn't damage anything. Let's start. Oh yeah, you just gotta love that fading on the light. And? I could've probably hit the volume. All right, there we go. I, again, I could've probably hit the eject while that was going. Loading. 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 This is this is probably why I like the progress bar more in the newer versions of Mac OS, but this this can definitely tell you if it's locked up or not. So there's trade-offs to both. Why don't they just have both, actually? Alright, let me turn the volume up. Wanna hear that sick OS 10 leopard intro? Volume's all the way up. Let's jam out, baby. Except on the video, I'm gonna have to acapella this. Because of copyright. Because it is a, you know, a song. Okay, so, uh, yeah, that didn't even play the music for some reason. I'm hitting the volume key, so there must be something wrong with the speakers. We're gonna have to troubleshoot that. Welcome. I do live in the United States. Uh, yeah. U.S. I don't have any information to transfer. Oh, I'm gonna have to censor that out in the editing. Yeah, but I'm glad I installed that net, uh, airport card. So now I can, uh, hook up to the internet. Enter my Apple ID. I don't have anything. Oh, come on. Okay, yeah, continue. That that was introduced in Leopard. You can skip the registration if you want to. 
I don't feel like putting all my personal information in on the video, so let's just do this. Yes, password. Uh, continue. Talking with Apple. Hey, what are, you, what, are, what are you talking to Apple about? How you wish the G5 was still relevant somehow? I mean, it kind of is if I'm, if I'm installing OS X Leopard on one right now. Now, they're probably telling Apple, Hey, I am a Mac OS X Leopard on iMac G5. And Apple's probably replying, What is this guy installing that piece of crap these days instead of Catalina and on a G5 too? It's probably not actually communicating much because Apple has basically shut down every server they have for this thing. All right, creating a registration. Okay, setting your computer's clock. Oh, thank you. Oh, they even they're even telling me thank you. Thank you. Your Mac is set up and ready so you can back up your computer, browse your files with CoverFlow, email with style, chat using effects and backdrops, organize your work. Well, Apple. You're welcome. Sweet! So we should be logging right in. Unless it wants my password. Which. Oh, uh, no, it doesn't. Okay. So, iMac G5, we're right here. Oh, yeah! This is freaking epic. I might just see the specs of this computer. Okay, so this is the 1.6 gigahertz model. And I threw in 1 gigabyte of DDR SD RAM. I thought that was 2 gigabytes. Jeez. 2008 Apple Incorporated. I think I'm just gonna leave 10.5.4 on here. I'm not gonna upgrade, update it. This is perfectly fine. I don't know if the transparency effects are working on the menu bar here, but I mean, I, I think they should be. Let me check the system preferences. There should be something in here. Whatever, I don't care anymore. All right, so now we're gonna have to troubleshoot the speaker issue. Because I couldn't tell. There's no sound coming out of it. So, we will be with you momentarily. Alright, so we're back in this thing. Yeah, they probably cook an egg on that. So, oh hey look, this is the contacts I used to, uh, no. This is the contacts I used to start the computer. Yeah, um, if you look on here, you'll see there's actually a mechanism for the button. And it still presses. So, it's actually shorting those contacts. So anyways, uh, yeah. Well, I think the speakers are connected somewhere over here. That pulled straight out. So I'm gonna pull all these cables out and, uh, reseat them real quick. Oh, I see a pin is bent. That's great. Alright. And I do have replacement speakers. If need be. I will be right back. All right, so uh, after the computer cooled down and put it all back together, uh, after I reseated the cables, and now the speakers work. And now we have that beautiful startup chime whenever we turn the computer on. Isn't that just wonderful when things just work? And now every time it will show up to this Apple logo for some reason, whenever I try to record the screen, it has this weird pattern that sh shrinks. Oh, never mind. Apparently, having my hand in front of the camera gets rid of it. That was an interesting pattern, though. Not gonna lie. Oh, there it is again. And now, we have a fully working iMac G5. I snagged this thing for $30 on offer up. So in the description, I'm going to leave a link to the seller who uh, sold me this darn thing. And don't don't message him unless you're actually gonna buy something from him, but sweet man, thanks. I'm glad I was able to get this thing working, although it was quite a bit more work than Crazy Ken had to go through. <laughs> but anyways, thank you guys for watching this episode, this edition of Life in the Tech House, and I will see you in the night sky. And of course, we have to end the video by shutting the computer down.